Hey guys and gals, what's up? It's Neon Tiger. Welcome back to Metrocraft server. Yay! We are we're back here at my my wonderful little base of amazing awesomeness. And we have a whole bunch of people on. Uh Tavinia, Graf's on, Desi's on, Sweebliss, uh Mark, T Love, Camaro, and myself. So we're back here and we've done a little bit of work. If you missed the stream, um on Friday, and you missed a lot of work. We made, first and foremost, we made a path, or at least the start of a path that goes all the way to Mage Haven. And we haven't built the bridges that are going to go across the pond yet. And I still need to actually talk to the other fine folks on the server and see if that's going to be an issue. If, if it is, I'm going to just bypass it. I'll go around the outside, make a path around the outside here toward Dark's place, and then out that way toward Kaze's place over there. And then this, of course, is the the multi farm that's now being set up by Alan, and you can see I've got a bench, got some nice magic leaves, and the jacaranda leaves. I kind of like the purple and the blue; it just gives it more of a magical feel. So we we'll also have to clean up some of this stuff here. We got these floating trees, and there's floating mushrooms around here. There's, look at that! Look at that mushroom's floating. We are going to have a a committee. I'm going to set up that will take care of floating stuff because I don't like it. It looks weird. <laughs> but back to back to the old house over here. And I mean, some of this stuff too, I got to clean this up because this is all stuff from lightning strikes, setting trees on fire. But we've also got ourselves a expanded um, little food area over here just outside the front gate of our castle. And by the way, I've had this uh, asked to me a couple times. This is not the permanent front gate. It is temporary until we have something set up that's a little bit better. So we've also set up our, as you saw in our last video with Desi, we set up our Alembic system, or the start of our Alembic system. We've got the rest of the components over here in our Thomcraft Things chest, so these alchemical constructs. And we've also probably got the start of our or infusion altar in there as well. So we'll have that short order. And I've also done a little bit of, obviously, some redecorating with some of the chests and whatnot. I've leveled this area out. Uh, we've got Miscraft Things. It's literally a, it's all the pages I have. And I'm trying to kind of go through and sort and see how many duplicates of pages I have, how many I can maybe give to other people. Um, I've also thought about setting up a library too. So wooden things, food things, obviously wood things in there, food things in there. And then this is everything else at the moment. So we just got a bunch of dirt, cobble. Actually have some resources for once. And then here is a bunch of stuff that I'm going to be combining together to make some more very powerful weaponry. Oh, and I should mention I have a lovely little bow, good old heartbreaker, power four on breaking three. And we've also got power two, flame one, power two, and power three. We're going to start to kind of melt those together and so we can get a power five um, unbreaking three flame one bow. That is that is the dream. That is the dream, everybody. But today I thought we would do a little bit of work. We have some stuff that needs to be taken care of. This has got to go. This is my, my path upstairs. And as much as I like it, it is kind of ugly and it's very slow we have a faster way to do that and so i've also got two arcane work tables now because two is better than one i have to make some goggles of revealing these ones are almost broke and let's open that up you can see in here we've got this set up this is for our arcane levitators we're going to have eight of them in total two on each of the floors that we have for our build here. So I'll have two on the bottom floor, two in the next floor, two on the next floor, and then two on the top. Or not like the top floor, but like the, the area that's going to be up there for the storage and the study area. So let's see here what we got here. Oh yeah, knowledge fragments. If you take nine knowledge fragments, put them in your crafting grid, you pop it out. Research note, right click to reveal. It is liquid death. Um, that's actually kind of useful. I think I, I have a research note for that, but I didn't take the flux penalty, did I? Um, oh wait, no, don't I take the penalty 
when I complete the research. Yeah, I take the penalty when I complete the research. So we'll hold on to that for now. We'll hold on to liquid death for now. So what that does, in case you're wondering, is, is it takes one of these random things that you do not have done research-wise you can get a note for, and it just picks one of them and puts it in your your inventory for you. So it's, uh, it's a nice way to put those knowledge fragments to use, but... It's not going to be much issue because we're not going to be going after liquid death right now. So let's go ahead and using our, do we have enough? I think we have enough. I'll go ahead and pop my, what's left of my goggles on there. Uh, so you can get, let's see, how many arcane levitators can we get? Eight. Oh, did we get all eight of them? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, we only got five. Okay. We only got five, but. That will be suffi uh, sufficient for what we're going to do for now. So let's see here. How do I want to set this up? So this is the middle. Middle block is right here. Uh, I think that was the sheep on the outside. So we'll put one here. And, oh, it's already doing its thing. Come back here, block. Come back here. Thank you. And we'll shift down. We saw these over in Zly's place, for those of you wondering. We might have seen these before. They are arcane levitators, and that is what they do. They basically let you hover up and down. And all you have to do is just hold shift to go down, and you automatically go up. So it's a nice way to get between levels without having tons of ungodly amounts of you know ladders all over the place. And it's not reliant on having... They're not V-powered or anything like that, so they're just they just naturally do that. Uh, the levitating thing, so we can go ahead and use that actually to, let's see here, grab some dirt. I'm going to grab some dirt, and I'm going to try and set up the, f the floors here. We're going to use dirt because we're going to use the wand of equal trade to do this once we're done, but we got to go ahead and at least get all of this filled in here. So I'm going to take a break, and I will be right back. Once we uh, once we have all this set up, and I'll see if I can find some birchwood too. I'm missing birchwood, so I'm gonna have to hunt that down. But just one moment. All right, we've done it. We've got everything all set. Now I've made a small mistake in my calculations. I'm actually too lower here than I should be because. If you notice, when I fell, I took some fall damage, and that's because I was a little too high on these arcane levitators when I came down off them. They're, they're a little fussy sometimes, especially with the lag. I need to actually get them up here to have a safe drop, so if I come on up here like that, that should be fine. But if I'm up here and I fall, it's actually kind of more of a hassle like that. So I can take, still take fall damage. I have to fix that. But all these other ones should be positioned just far enough apart that it's not an issue. And plus, when I move these up two blocks, what this will do is it'll actually even this out. So this this floor will no longer be down here. It will be right here. So I've also gone ahead, taken the liberty of plugging up the water that we had up here. So that's no longer on the outside. In fact, if I can poke down here, you can see I've sealed that off as well with the stair block. So we are all set. This is our new way of getting up, and these will be our four areas. And I'll explain really quickly what I'm hoping to do with each of these areas. So we're going to have another set of arcane levitators up here. I don't quite know where I'm going to put them. I might put them, like, right over here, a little further away from there. But these are going to go upstairs to the roof where the infusion altar is going to be. This will be a, I guess, like a study Area. This will be where kind of my main living quarters are, and it'll be windows and all that fun stuff. So down here, oh, 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 that's the nice thing about the about falling with these arcane levitators now is I I die a lot less. Um, but uh, this right here, I think I've got two possible rooms. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. So I think this might be where the Olympic system goes eventually. Once I figure out how I want to have it, and I'll have jars on all the walls, and we'll have a whole system here for boiling things down to their essentia and filtering it to tubes. And then down here, if you've seen Zly's place, uh, Zly's place over in Magehaven, 
he's got that whole setup where he's got all the nodes hanging out, and he's got the the node charger in the mi- uh, the wand charger in the middle, and there's nodes that he's got that feed into the wand uh, charger, and that's what's going to go here. We're going to have our wand charger in this room once we get it fixed up, and I think this will just be like a an entry area. It's right now where we're living, but eventually we'll get rid of this and turn it into kind of like a, a general entry area where you can be like, oh, come on in, take a look at all my stuff. You just have to go up here. You know, that's that's kind of the idea. But we might need to go ahead and lower our V costs a little bit before we start getting into this crazy stuff because it can be prohibitively expensive. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our old friend uh, Thaumaturge's robes and the Thaumaturge's leggings and whatnot. So... What I've done there is I've made some enchanted fabric. Fairly easy to make. It's a bunch of wool plus string on all the outside. And you have a small V-cost. I'm actually... Oh, I forgot to put my Thumb Church's robe on. I actually already made the robe just to make sure that it would work. Still, one that the recipes were the same. So, it's the same as armor. So, this is the leggings, obviously. Like pants. Go ahead and make those. And then boots. No surprise, Thaumaturge's boots. And they, they offer, each of these offers a little bit of a V discount. So in total, it, it comes out to 10%, I believe. So you can get it down to 90%. Plus, uh, your wand will eventually have various discounts as well. So we'll go ahead and plop those on. You can see I've also dyed my robe. So now it's, at least the top part here is gray instead of being... Uh, purple. And we can do that. Let me go ahead and take my leggings off and I'll show you how to do that. If you go ahead and just dye them like you would normal leather armor, you can kind of do it, but um, you kind of do it the same. The only issue is that no matter how much you dye them, they only end up being gray instead of white. So I can keep dyeing this forever. And I can go ahead and pop them back on. And now they're gray. So that's uh, that's just unfortunately the way they are. That's kind of a, a sad, little, sad little thing here. I wanted to get them to be orange, obviously, for various obvious reasons. But the problem is because they're gray, they only end up coming out brown. And I didn't quite like the brown color so much. So I decided not to do that. Maybe I'll dye them a different color. Maybe I'll try blue. So... That's that. So what else do we want to do today? We've got our arcane levitators all set up. We've got the thaumaturgist robes here, which, by the way, we'll need to set up another... I have a stand here. I'll have to make a stand real quick here. So in case you're wondering, how do I make an armor stand? Very easy, very simple. There's my slabs. There's my slabs. Take these slabs, these three slabs, across the bottom, two iron ingots on top, armor stand from Bibliocraft. And then that goes right over there. And you can go ahead and just click on and off everything if you want to. And it's always there for you if you need it. And then all you have to do to get it back is just click. You can also, once you have this on the stand, just right click to swap out. So I can swap out that just by shift right clicking. And that will go ahead and you can see it's changing my armor as well. And you can also shift right click to put stuff on there. Just in the right spots. So obviously head, chest, pants, boots. And we didn't want to do any research today. So there's Heartbreaker. Let me see here. Let me try and figure out what else we wanted to do today. Let me see. What was in my Thalmnomicon? Anything that we wanted to do besides that? Huh. Well... Maybe we can get started on the infusion table a little bit. We'll start to get the things together for it, at least. So for an infusion table, what you need is a runic matrix, which is an enderpearl, arcane stone blocks, air shard, or whatever shard you want. And that's fairly easy to do. You also need to make some of these arcane pedestals. And you need to arrange them like so. So you need four arcane stone bricks, four arcane uh, stone blocks, an arcane pedestal in the middle, and a runic matrix. You'll also want to make some more arcane pedestals. I would advise, here's the setup that they have here. I've got four. I would advise making at least 12. I think that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and start getting that together right now. 
So, like the recipe said, we got our four arcane stone blocks here. We've got our earth shards. We have so many earth shards. We're going to use earth shards for the majority of the stuff that we do. And ender pearl. Now, our arcane costs, our cost here is at 90% because you can see 90% V cost because we are wearing all of our Thaumaturge's gear. So that includes Sagakwa's every revealing, Thaumaturge's robe, leggings, and boots, which offer a per total percent of 10% uh, off your V cost. So let's go ahead and grab our runic matrix out of there. And you can see it's just kind of a, a nice fancy block. It looks a lot like the arcane stone bricks, but this goes in the middle of our infusion altar when we do it. So we still need to go ahead and let's see, we need four of those. We'll keep four of those sequestered and off the side here. Put them here in our, our chest with the runic matrix as well. Oh yeah, we wanted to make some more uh, goggles of revealing, but we'll do that off camera since it's just a repair job. Um, so we want to go ahead and make a bunch of those. So the cost for the arcane pedestal is usually 5 air V, but in this case it's 4.5. So we've got two pedestals, which is not quite enough. We have one for the actual altar, and we want to make another, uh, I'd say 11 or so, just because, oh, I fell down the hole. Uh, actually, let me take a look here, but I'll show you why with some of these advanced recipes, we need a whole lot of these pedestals. So take a look at the arcane boar. As you can see here, what we've got is one block, one item in the middle, and we've got these eight items around the outside, and we've also got these different aspects on the bottom. And let me explain a little bit about this. I'll, I'll show you later when we actually build the altar what all of this looks like when it's set up. But the item here in the middle, this piston block, is going to be what we put on the altar underneath the runic matrix. It's what we're going to use kind of as our, our item we're transforming. And each of these items on the outside here, the great wood planks, the gold ingot, the diamond pickaxe, diamond shovel, air shard, and earth shard, these things will all be taken and transformed and destroyed to create the arcane boar here. So everything here will go bye-bye because the Rudic Matrix will kind of suck it all up and will break it down. So it's a, it's a bit of the cost of actually making the item, as well as these different aspects down here. Some Machina, Modus, Perfodio, Potentia, and Vacuous. So these are all actually you know, complex aspects. They're not ones that we can get in our wand. So they're the ones that we have to distill out of items, which means that we need our good old Arcane Olympic over here to do all of that stuff. And we'll have to throw everything into the alchemical furnace, get it all distilled down, get it into the jars. And most importantly, we need, see these numbers down here next to the Machina, Modus, Perfodios, 32, 16, 32, 16, 16. That's the amount of aspects that you need of each type to actually successfully perform the infusion to get the arcane boar. So we need to have at least 32 of the, uh, the machina in one of these jars that we would place around the infusion altar. But the catch is sometimes the altar gets a little fussy and it knocks things off and you have to run, put things back on. And if it, if there's any sort of delay in actually putting the the whole thing together it takes more and more aspects so you so here's a little hint you always want to have more aspects than what you need for for let me see for any of these things so if you say you know if you only put 16 in there and let's say this air share gets knocked off you run over and it says okay i want another modus because well, i'm still going and you don't have that it will start to cause all kinds of bad things and your whole infusion kind of just gets ruined. You have to start all over again. Nobody wants to do that. So if it says 16, I'm going to take 24 in there. If it says 32, I'm going to go with 40 just to be on the safe side to make sure that I have a little bit of a buffer. There's also this instability rating down here. And what that does is kind of gives you an idea of how likely it is that something's going to come by and mess it up. You're going to get, you know, something knocked off a pedestal, something is going to disappear. So yeah, that reminds me as well, if you're going to go ahead and do one of these crazy things at moderate or major or extreme or anything higher than, you know, like the most low level basic stuff, you probably want to make sure that you have at least one or two extra of everything that you have because sometimes it will knock things off and it'll go flying off your tower or 
it'll just vaporize it. You know, you got to be careful. So let me see here if I can find one that's got a, oh. like, negligible here. So this one you don't have to worry so much about for X the stream. You need a Thaumia Max, Water Shard, Great Wit Log, Water Shard, and another Diamond, plus 16 Aqua and 8 Arbor. That's a fairly low-level Infusion Enchant. So let's see if we can find anything else. Thaumastatic Hardest, Instability High. So for this one, you can see, this is why we need more than just the 8. And a lot of people will only stick with 8. This one requires 9. So you've got 2 Air Shards, 2 Great Wood Planks, Redstone Comparator, 2 Gold Ingots, 2 Iron Ingots. That's 9 items, plus a Leather Tunic in the middle. And then you also need all of these various uh, aspects for the actual infusion itself. It's got a very high instability. You want to be very careful when you're doing that. Let's see if there's anything else. No traveling trunks. Yeah, instability minor. Very low level. Don't have to worry too much about it. Usually, usually the less that goes into something that you're doing in the infusion altar, the lower instability it has. The less. Um, you know, less items, the less aspects that you have in it. It's, it's usually more negligible if you're dealing with a smaller uh, infusion altar recipe than a, a much larger one. So let's see if we can find a, another big one just to kind of show off what we're doing. Uh, automated alchemy. This is something we actually need to learn as well. So this is the, the thing we were talking about the other day with Desi. It's this automated alchemy stuff. And let me go ahead and research that. Because we're going to need to learn that as well. And plus, I know some people have asked about it on the server. So I'll go ahead and research that real quick. And then we'll go and let's see, get describing tools. And we'll go ahead and just talk a little bit about that. All right, so automated alchemy. This is the thing that we needed the alchemical constructs and the crucible for. And this is also the thing that we were talking about the other day with the thaumatorium. So... Up to now, alchemy has been a somewhat of a hit and miss affair, miscounted aspects, degrading ascension, and ingredients that require manual labor to mix. So that we've seen that before. We saw that, yes, in the last episode with Dusty and having to throw things into the crucible and all these crazy, crazy things that we have to do and the ascension kind of boiling away. It's, it's messy. But the Thaumatorium is a marvelous invention that allows the Thaumaturge to select which formula to use and what catalyst to add. It then automatically draws ascension from available sources using tubes. As long as there's a supply of catalysts, that produces the required object perfectly every time. So what it does, it takes away a lot of the the flux, you know, the taint, all the, the heavy, hard work that you have to do when you're making a wonderful little alchemical whatever in your crucible. So it requires the crucible that forms a base does not require water, but heat source is still needed. So for that, we're going to go ahead and use night ore. Because it's a non-flammable material, and since we're working with uh, a lot of wood flooring in here, we do not want to burn the whole structure down. So we're going to be using nitor to power that instead of the the old way of doing it, which is just a piece of nether rack and flint and steel, which we've done before. It's not the best thing in the world, but you know, nitor is a lot easier. In fact, I think I have a, a nitor left. So let's uh, let's grab the crucible. Where's my nitor? There it is, right there. And let's see if we can go up here. Oh, actually, let's grab our chemical construct as well. So we've got both of these. And we're gonna set this up in the middle of the room. That's the idea of having it be a circle. Oh, there we go. So it's gonna be, I think, right up here. There we go. So you gotta get broke. I'm sorry, but we'll make that make that useful. So let's come back down here. We gotta come back down here. We gotta at least set all of this up. And what's nice too is if we use the night tour properly, it'll also provide a light source for the uh, the blocks underneath it. So we'll do that. And there's our night tour with a light level of 14. Oh, oh, I broke it. That's the thing about night tours. It's really fussy. You can break it really easily. So we'll just do that. Two. And be gone. Alright, so now we'll take our crucible, plop it down there. It's got the oh actually this is one block too low, huh? That's fine, we can fix that. So let's go ahead. And we wanna break that again anyways. Oh, let's go down there. No, 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 come back down. Come back down. Alright. 
this is so much easier than having to do it the other way. I would have killed myself doing this about 10 minutes ago. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we can put the Nator down there. There we go. Much better. No. Arcane Levitator, behave. Alright, so now that is that is lit. We don't have to worry about that anymore. So we can take these two alchemical constructs, place one here, second one on top of it, and I think we Nope, that's not it. Um That is dirt. <laughs> uh Okay, so what does it say? How do we do this? Crucible. If access to the fight, you will see several slots. Once you have done this, you'll be able to choose which recipe you wish to craft with the catalyst from a list of possibilities in the top right slot. Um, okay, so let me first take off the... Let's just take off the foci here and we'll... Can we shift right click? Okay, um, hmm. Well, this is interesting. We've at least got this all set up. So I'm going to have to figure out, I guess, how this works in the future. But we've got our Arcane Levitator. We've got our Thaumaturgist Robe. We're starting to really get into the, the heavy-duty stuff here in Thaumcraft. But next time, I will be going on an adventure, and I will not need my Thaumaturgist Robes for that. I will need the strongest, best gear that I have because we're going to be going somewhere special with T-Love and a bunch of other people. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay magic, my friends. Stay magic.